No. So I'm a couple days away from leaving for the Arctic Ocean. That's right. Canada opened its border up on Monday. I've been making lots of preps on my R pod to get ready to go north. It's going to take me about two weeks to get to the Arctic Ocean from Indiana. But today I'm taking a bit of a break from all the preparations. And we're going to go fishing. I'm uh, downstream of Raccoon Lake, or otherwise known as Cecil M. Harden Lake. Downstream of the dam in what's known as Big Raccoon Creek. And we're going to do some fishing. Now, you go on the Indiana DNR website and you'll be able to find that they stocked this back in spring with 750 rainbow trout. So that's uh, about four months ago. Let's hope those things have grown and they're still out here to be caught. Now you're able to find out what the water level is here because the USGS has a water level height. Get off of there. <laughs> you can find out what the water level is here uh, downstream of the dam because the USGS has a water level site. It also has temperature and that way you can keep an eye on what, what the water level is and whether or not you want to even get in the stream. Now I have a spinning rod and I have a fly rod. We're going to use the spinning rod. It's a little guy. This works really good in these little streams. And they got different rooster tails. It's overcast. It's hot as heck today. Uh, only like 50% chance of rain though. It is dark sky so. So there's a stream gauge from the USGS. You can go on their website and you can check it out. Alright, sprayed a bunch of off on me. I don't worry about the mosquitoes so much. Had some birds nest up under here. They're all falling away. I did see a bald eagle while I was getting ready to come down here though. Might have been two. Could have been the same one just circled back around. Great thing about fishing in streams, even if you catch nothing, it's a great walk in the woods. <gasps> nope, that's not what it is. What is it? Can't tell. Is it watching me? No. Oh. There's a stick. You can just make out the streams over there because there's this big bend right here. Over there is usually good spots for catching trout in the past. Of course, that was like 20 years ago when I was in college. It's interesting how much the stream changes over the years. I was just out here last summer and last fall fishing a couple of times. Just a little bluegill. Not too bad. It's small to eat though.
The elusive leaf fish. I'm pretty close to the roads around here so you can hear traffic. You know, by saying my fishing trips tend to turn into this really nice walks in the woods. Had one. That's been a little. That little bluegill. All right, I think that's all the further downstream I'm gonna go. I've got an extra battery in my pocket for the GoPro and my key fob for the truck in my pocket. And to go that way, I'm afraid I'm gonna get waist deep water and I don't want to ruin those things. Otherwise I would have left them in the truck and I could have kept going. The camera's fine, it's a GoPro, it can hack the water just fine. But not the battery in my pocket or the key fob. And I'm getting thirsty. So let's start heading back. Caught what, three or four bluegill, one bass, and one rather large creek chub of some sort. When I first got here I saw a bald eagle flying. They've been nesting in the area for about the last 30 years I think. In the late 80s, early 90s, they started repopulating around the lake, coming out of Canada. But uh, we'll head back, and of course I'll show you the spillway of the dam, because everyone wants to check those things out. More likely, that's also where they dumped all the rainbow trout, the 750s that they supposedly stocked. There's an access road that they could have gone down pretty easily at the entrance. I guess the exit of the spillway. Yeah, it's just a nice walk in the woods. Lots of birds. There's a farm over there, you can hear the chicken. Saw some raccoon tracks. Saw footprints of someone else had been out here recently. I find it generally easier to walk downstream to fish. That way when you're casting, you just bring it up through the stream with, against the current. If you're trying to walk up through the fish, it's a little bit harder. It's a little easier to see the water profile though. When I checked the uh, USGS website for the water level, it said it was at six foot. And that's where the Sensors located, it's not with the actual, it's not six foot of water out here. And that's all what? Foot and a half, two foot? <clears throat> I 
There's a downside. Some people come here with glass bottles. That's the reason why I have water socks. Try and prevent me cutting my foot up. And the rocks can get pretty sharp. There's some mussel shells that are pretty sharp. The water for here is fairly shallow, but it's moving pretty fast. So it sits at six feet. I'm walking through right now. See the, the ripples. So at eight foot, this is a little more difficult to cross. Go up the other leg of the stream part. Heron, I think. And we're back. There's the bridge. So you can see the USGS sensor. kid there was no easy access out here parked up there walk through the woods walk through the tall grasses get eaten up by chairs that night but now with this nice parking area paved access road back here look at there can you see it horses here only for the Amish We've got uh, bathrooms here now a little playground a little pavilion it's got a little bit of everything out here now what we're going for though is to the spillway. Across the stream. If I can get a better view of him. I'm gonna have a tree and across the stream. I guess he doesn't like me. So there's the backside of the dam with the spillway. Now all this sidewalk and railing and little balcony type area, that didn't exist when I was a kid. I had to walk down through the woods and grasses from up there, come all the way down here to fish. And they have an access road that goes down along here on this flat part. That's probably where they dumped the trout. So somewhere in this water, they put 750 rainbow trout this spring, according to the website. Now I don't know how popular this area is, fishing the rainbows. It's pretty easy to get access to. So a bunch of them may have been fished out. At this point probably the best bet is where I was fishing going further down. Because all that water rushing through here during their heavy rains would have washed some of those rainbows down past the bridge and down further 
great. Did you see that? Something splashed right over there. It's been so hot today, even my GoPro shut down a couple of times from overheating. Years ago, there was a path through these woods, through some grasses. Man, I got eaten by chiggers when I did that last time in college, in 1997 time frame. Whoa, bouncing on a rock. Hello, bluegill. So I managed to catch, what, three bluegill, one large creek chub of some sort, and a bass. Got hot. My GoPro got hot. They opened up the Canadian border for people to cross now. So in a couple of days, I'm gonna finish packing everything up in my RV. And I saw some idiot post a picture of their R-Pod travel trailer at the Arctic Ocean. Couldn't get access to that place until November 2017. I think they finished building a gravel road all the way up to that sign at the Arctic Ocean. So since some idiot took their R-Pod all the way up there, this city wants to do it too. So I know what you're thinking. Will, don't threaten me with a good time. So if you want to see my misadventures on my attempt to drive to the Arctic Ocean, you have to stay tuned to the channel and hope for the best. Of course, you might be one of those people who are hoping I get eaten by a bear. The game plan is to take off on Monday, try and get up to Minot, North Dakota in about two days. Somewhere along the way, stop and get my PCR test for the COVID, make sure I don't have it. I've got my passport ready, I've got my vaccine card ready. I've got my dog's records to show that she's up on a rabies shot. I've got about as much prep as I can do. It's just getting up there now and making it happen. Should take about two weeks to get all the way up there from Indiana. But I only have Alaska left of the 50 states. So even if I don't make it all the way up to the Arctic Ocean, I can make it at least to Alaska. Should be good times. So I'm a couple days away from leaving for the Arctic Ocean. Another car coming by. Sucks. Heading for the Arctic Ocean. Another car coming by. That sucks. I've got my dog's vaccine records for her. Not anthrax. What's the word I want? Rabies. They're still out here to be caught. Get off of there. One floating twig is the one I grabbed. Of course. 